So is K2 good for your bones or your heart? It's actually both. The reason why is the intriguing part and it's not the story that you would expect. Heart disease is often a complication of too much calcium in the arteries and thus you get calcification of the arteries and hardening of the arteries. This leads to higher blood pressure and cardiovascular disease. Yet something else happens as we get older and that is that we get osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is a condition where there's too little calcium in our bones and thus we become frail, we're prone towards fractures and these fractures of our spine and hip can deform our posture as well as cause ultimate death. So ultimately, as we get older, we have too little calcium in the bones and too much calcium in the arteries. So how can we get the calcium out of our blood and into our bones? First of all, just to let you know, I'm gonna let you know exactly how much K2 to take, what foods to eat, but let me go through some research to let you know why this is important. And by the way, my name is Dr. Story. I've been a doctor of chiropractic for over 28 years. I'm gonna give you some realistic information based on my own research, as well as based on what I learned in school and based on the scientific literature. And having said that, we never really learned about K2 in our nutrition classes when I went to school. And the reason why is because it just wasn't a big thing. Vitamin K was just considered vitamin K and it was for clotting. And where you got it was from, you know, our food. Now that was considered K1. Now K2 is a totally different vitamin. Now vitamin K2 is a product of bacteria that work on foods. So most of the foods are gonna be fermented foods that you want to eat. I personally do not like fermented foods. I can't eat NATO or sauerkraut and that's just, it ain't gonna happen. I don't care how healthy that stuff is. So I will eat other foods that will help with uh, K2 in my body and I'm just gonna take supplements. One of the problems with this situation of this calcium buildup in our arteries and too little calcium in the bones is that many people will take calcium supplements. This is a common uh, thing that elderly people will do. And one of the paradoxical things about it is there's research to support that maybe these calcium supplements are not healthy for our cardiovascular disease. And I'll put a link down below in the description if you wanna read the full details, but I'm just gonna summarize it for you. So the first one you see down below in the description is a meta-analysis of 13 double-blind randomized controlled trials. And what they found was supplementation with 1,000 milligrams of calcium actually increased the patient's cardiovascular disease. In addition to that, taking vitamin D3, and you'll, I'll put this research down below, did not reduce the risk of fractures in people that are prone towards fractures. Strike two for uh, vitamin D and calcium supplementation as far as cardiovascular disease and hip fractures are concerned. Now it's interesting because that means that the taking the calcium and the vitamin D3 isn't really helping our bones yet at the same time it's harming us in terms of cardiovascular disease. Because instead of depositing the calcium in the bones was which is where we want it, we're now depositing the calcium in our arteries. Why? Well, it's possible because of the Western diet, our lack of vitamin K2 is the culprit. The main action of vitamin K2 is to take calcium out of our bloodstream and deposit it into our bones. Thus, if there's a shortage of K2 in our diet, then the bone will not be absorbing the calcium the way it should. The calcium will stay in our arteries and very often can line the walls of the arteries. And you probably have had tests done with your cardiologist to see the calcium score that you have inside your arteries. So are there any studies to support this? And in the studies, how much vitamin K did they use 
And what did they notice? The answer is yes, they have had studies. And the Rotterdam study, which looked at 5,000 men and women, they were all over the age of 55 and they followed them for eight to 11 years. And what this study found was that if they had K2 in their diet, then there was a 50% reduction in cardiovascular disease, particularly the calcification of their arteries. And mortality from all causes was reduced by 25%. Another study called the Prospect Study looked at 16,000 women. I'm not sure why they didn't look at men, but that's what they did. They looked at the dietary levels of K2 and found with each incremental increase of vitamin K2, they had a significant reduction of artery calcification and cardiovascular death. How much K2 relative to the risk did they find? They found that for every 10 micrograms of vitamin K2, the reduced rate of death was 9%. In 2015, there was the NAPIN study, which demonstrated a reversal of the calcification of people's arteries. How much did they take? 180 micrograms. I will put that link down below as well for you. So ultimately, how much am I taking? That's what people really wanna know. Well, let's go home and I will show you exactly what I take. Let me show you the one that I've been taking. It's this one right here. It's titled MK7, 90 micrograms, and it's from Jaro Formulas. So again, there'll be a link down in the description if you want to look at it and see if it's right for you. That's it. That's the video. We're all done. You can go now. Are you still here? They're still watching. Go. <laughs>